Coming up on Hands On Mac, it's time to take a look at managing and installing extensions on Safari. Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is Twit. Welcome back to Hands On Mac. I am Micah Sargent, and today we are taking a look at extensions on Safari on macOS Ventura. These are, of course, the uh, little tools, so to speak, that you can add to Safari uh, by way of extensions. And there are ways to manage them to understand the different privacy implications uh, and to make sure that you are using them properly. So I thought we'd take a look at everything that is involved. All right, let's head over to macOS to take a look. Here we are on macOS, and the first thing we're going to want to do is launch Safari, as you might imagine. Uh, Once we have launched Safari, uh, we will go ahead. I'm going to kind of full screen this almost so that we've got everything on the screen. And we are going to go up to the Safari menu and choose settings. Now, you'll notice that in the menu where there is a Safari extensions button, I did or selection, I did not choose that. And that is because and this continues to be a bother for me. One would think maybe that choosing Safari extensions would take you to the settings for Safari extensions. No, in fact, it takes you to the place in the Mac App Store where Safari extensions are available. So if you want to adjust the settings for Safari extensions, you need to choose settings and then you need to click on extensions. When you choose extensions, you will see uh, a screen pop up that has all of the extensions that you might have installed. Uh, on the device. On the left hand side are the different extensions and they will have a box to the left of them. If the box is checked as in it has a check mark in it, that means it's activated. If the box is just a square with no checkbox in it, that means that it's deactivated. If it has a line in it, that means that it is kind of in an in-between state. It's activated, but there's something about it that has not been fully selected, meaning that it works, but maybe there's a feature that isn't turned on. In this case, it could be that because we have profiles, Safari profiles, which is uh, something that I talked in, talked about in a previous episode of Hands on Mac, it is enabled for personal profiles, but is not enabled for all of the profiles. So let's take a look at kind of what you can see in an extensions, uh, in an extensions menu. If I choose one of these extensions, let's go with any box uh, up at the top. You will see the name of the extension, the uh, version of the extension and a little bit of information about it, including kind of what it does. So in this case, the any box extension sends the current tabs URL to any box. If you click on the extension when it's in use, it will send that tab to an app called AnyBox. There's an option to uninstall it and a settings option. If we click on the settings option, we can choose the profile that AnyBox works in. So in this case, you might want it for personal or you might want it for work. I'm going to choose personal and uh, then I can see those settings for the personal version of any box. In this case, it says, uh, the, these are just two options. Do I want to display the badge on the icon for the existing URL? And do I want to click the toolbar icon to show quick save instead of saving to any box immediately? So in this case, when I click it, it opens up a menu for any box instead of just automatically sending it to uh, any box. So those are just some settings for that app. But let's keep looking. Let's take a look at another app like this app called Baking Soda. So this one doesn't have settings. It only allows me to uninstall. In the area below, I can choose to manage which profiles it's on. Now, you'll notice that in the left hand menu, it is currently deselected. So I want to turn this on by selecting it. And then I'm presented with the option to uh, manage which profiles it's a part of. We want it for personal and work. And so you can uh, read that it says baking soda is active in the personal and work profiles. That's why it shows up at the checkbox instead of just a line. And then under private browsing, we can choose to allow it in private browsing mode. So when you open up a Safari screen that is a Safari window that is in private browsing, do you want this app to still work in that uh, version? We will choose yes, and this does require authentication. So I will tap my uh, fingerprint to authenticate and allow it in private browsing. Now, 
The most important aspect of this uh, is the section that's marked web page contents and browsing history. This is uh, the ability, the permissions that you give the extension to actually work and interact with whatever it is that you're browsing. It sounds kind of scary because you are giving it permission to work on maybe just one website, two websites, all of your websites. It depends, of course, but it can seem kind of scary to give an extension full permission. Many of them, though, do need that full permission. So you can choose to edit websites, which will give you the ability to choose specific websites that baking soda is able to alter and read, or you can choose to give it permission to all websites. So if we click I'll always allow on every website, it will po pop up a prompt to say, are you sure that's what you want to do? I will choose yes. And now that extension is able to look at any web page that I'm using uh, and see the browsing history on all of my websites. It's just something to be aware of because you are giving it a lot of permission to view a lot of things. But if it's from a reputable developer, it's not something that you have to worry about. So depending on your sort of own level of comfort, you may choose to just make a uh, a specific extension available only in specific websites where you definitely want to use them and then not others. And that's where you can choose edit websites to select which ones it's allowed. So that's all up to you based on kind of how you feel about your threat model. At any time, you can choose Again, to uninstall an extension by clicking the uninstall button, that will walk you through the process of uninstalling the extension. You can disable an extension by simply selecting the checkbox to the left of the extension. And that, of course, will allow you to uh, disable it. Now, there are a few other options when it comes to extensions. Uh, first and foremost, if you have multiple Apple devices, that are signed into your Apple ID that have the many of the iCloud syncing features turned on, you will see an option at the bottom of the extensions menu uh, window rather that says share across devices. That gives you the ability to not only make sure that your extensions are on every single device, but the settings that you have for your extensions are on every device. If you have this selected, it's going to sync those choices across all of your devices that are logged into that account. If you don't want them to sync, you simply deselect that and then each individual device will follow its own set of rules. Of course, if you have three devices and you have two of them with share across devices turned on, those two will sync with each other. So you'd need to disable it on each one if you didn't want it. Now, let's talk about what the process is to actually install extensions. You can do two things. One, you can choose more extensions once you are in the extensions menu, or you can do that thing that I was kind of complaining about earlier, which is by selecting Safari in the menu bar and choosing Safari extensions. That will pop up the Mac App Store and will take you directly to the extensions uh, part of the Mac App Store. I'm just going to go to this list of the best Safari extensions according to uh, Apple's own editorial team, and I can see some different extensions that are available. So let's say I really think that the Hush Nag blocker looks cool. I will select it and I will see what it's all about. Uh, in this case, it kind of gets rid of those um, cookie banners that pop up. So I'm going to choose Get, and I'm going to choose Install, and then it's going to uh, prompt me to install this. So in this case, I need to log in uh, to be able to get it. So I will do that. OK, we are back and I have just um, authenticated for the installation of the Hushnag blocker. So it is installing. And once it's uh, available, I will choose open and you'll notice that it does pop open a little app. Safari extensions work this way where there's kind of a little satellite app that exists, but you can kind of ignore that. So I don't recommend clicking the open button because everything that you want to do is going to be in the settings. So we'll choose Safari, we'll choose settings, and now we go to Hush. And right now Hush is not active, so I will enable it. And then I will uh, check that it's available in both the personal and work profiles and allow it in private browsing. Uh, now Hush is enabled and we can see uh, that it is turned on. Now, Hush does not have 
a bunch of different settings. It is simply there to just do that uh, disabling of, of cookies. So let's see if we go to, uh, because I believe on the Twit website, we do have typically a cookie banner that appears at the bottom and we don't have that right now. So I'm going to actually go into the settings and I'm going to turn off hush. And I'm also going to um, disable one blocker rules because I know that one blocker also blocks some annoyances. And so we'll see when we turn this off and we'll turn off vinegar as well. And let's just go ahead and turn off any box. So now all of the extensions are turned off. If we reload this web page, you'll see that this has cookies at the bottom. If we choose Safari and we choose settings and we uh, enable hush, then we'll reload the page and you'll notice that the little cookie banner is gone from the bottom of the page. At any time, if you want to, again, uninstall a, a specific extension, you can simply choose uninstall. You will choose show and finder to find the application for that extension if it is uh, created via an application. And you simply move to trash. And then I need to authenticate here. And now that is gone. Uh, we'll go ahead and empty the trash. And now if we go back into Safari and we choose settings, you will notice that Hush is no longer available. That, folks, is how you manage extensions, install extensions, make changes to extensions, sync extensions, do everything with extensions in Safari. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Hands on Mac. You can email me, Micah, at twit.tv with your questions, concerns, topic ideas, etc. cetera. Uh, and I thank you for being a member of Club Twit. If you are listening to this and not watching it, uh, consider joining the club. When you do, you will be able to gain access to the video version of Club Twit, which is the video version of Club Twit, the video version of Hands on Mac. Uh, so if you want to see what I'm talking about every week, that is how you can uh, do that. You join us at twit.tv slash club twit. Thank you so much for your time. And I will see you again next week. Bye bye.